here we are. Here is a quadratic function. Negative 2x squared minus 16x minus 25. Your first question asks you, is this function, is the graph of that function cupped up or cupped down? Well, let me show you what that means. I'm also working on my laptop, so I'm actually writing on the screen. It's a little clunky doing that. Cupped up. This is cupped. Up. And this is cupped down. Do you see where these U's, if I were really drawing, it would be a parabola, which tilts out on the left and right. But oh well, I do have a problem being a, um, an artist who draws. Nonetheless, notice where the path turns around. That's called the vertex. The vertex of the parabola. Here, the path is going up and then it's going down. The turnaround point is the vertex. Now through the vertex goes an imaginary line. Doesn't really exist, but it serves us. It helps us um, because in a well-drawn parabola, the parabola is doing exactly the same thing on the left and the right of that vertical line, which is called the axis of symmetry. Now notice that the vertex is the lowest point in a cupped up parabola and the highest point in a cupped down parabola. All of that will come into play as we analyze our uh, quadratic functions. Now, notice that the A term is negative two. Negative two is less than zero. That's the situation we have right here. When A is negative, less than zero, your parabola is going to be cupped down like this. I don't know if you can see this, so I'll circle it. All right, so I said draw a little picture of your parabola. That's just so you'll have it to refer to. That's good enough. No, it's not. It's not really good enough. Let me erase it and try again. See, it tilts out. It doesn't really go straight up and down like a U. Okay, that's better. I'm going to stick with that. The vertex is up here. It's the highest point. Now, question two. Oh yes, I need to circle, don't I? It's cupped down. There we go. Now, is the vertex a minimum lowest or maximum highest point? Well, clearly, your vertex is your highest point. So it's your maximum point. Circle one, okay. Maximum highest point. Now what about the y-intercept? That's the easiest point to find. The y-intercept is what you get when all of the x's equal zero. So if this x is zero and this x is zero, 
we end up with negative 25, the constant on the end. So our y-intercept written as an ordered pair is what you get when x, all of the x's are zero. And that's negative 25. Okay, so far it's not too hard. Now we're going to actually find what point that vertex is. So let's talk about the vertex a little more. It's a very important point. So, even though it's just an XY point, like all points, we name them special names. The X coordinate is called H and the Y coordinate is called K. H has a formula right there. H equals negative B over 2A. So that means we need to know our A, B, C's. A is negative 2. And B is negative 16. All right, now I'm going to use this formula to first find H, then I'll find K. So H equals negative B, negative B over two times A. That will be negative, negative 16, over 2 times negative 2. So that will be positive 16 over negative 4. And that will be negative 4. So H is negative 4. Now I need to put K in this place right here. Here's how we find K. K is what you get when you let all of your X's equal negative four. So we'll have negative two times negative four squared. I realize here I am, yes. Writing on the screen is not easy. Oops, I need my formula though. Minus 16 times negative four minus 25. Okay, now I can scroll. Negative 2 times negative 4 squared, that's positive 16. Minus 16 times negative 4, that's plus 64. Minus 25. And what is that going to be? That's going to be negative 32 plus 64 minus 25, which will be negative 32 plus 64 is positive 32. So we'll have 32 minus 25, and that will be 7. So the K number is seven and our vertex this point right there is negative four seven what do you think about that okay
trying to find a more comfortable way to adjust this. Uh, the equation of the axis of symmetry. That's that little vertical line that goes through the vertex. The equation of the axis of symmetry is right here. X equals negative B over 2A. And negative B over 2A is H. So X equals the H number is going to be the, ac the equation of the axis of symmetry. X equals negative four. Now, number six, what is the minimum or the maximum value? Let's go back to question number two. In question two, we said that the vertex was the highest point, the maximum point. Therefore, we're going to have a maximum value for the function. The maximum value or the minimum value, if you have one, is always going to be your K number. Now, what was K? It was seven. So our maximum value is seven. That's the highest Y value reached by this graph. The rest of the graph is below seven, Y equals seven. Now state the domain of the quadratic function in interval notation. The domain of all quadratic functions is negative infinity to positive infinity, which is the entire x-axis. Now state the range. We have a cupped down parabola. So the range is going to be negative infinity to the K number and then a bracket. Well, what's the K number? Seven. Yeah, seven right there. So negative infinity to seven is the range of our function. And we're done. This sheet is going to be part of a larger sheet that you'll be completing if you're in my college algebra class. So get ready by learning it now. We'll just do another one rather than go over this one. Here we have function f of x equals 2x squared plus 14x plus 23. Look at the a number first. It's positive 2. That means a is greater than 0. That means your function, your quadrat the graph of your quadratic function, is cupped up like a cup of coffee. There we go. And that means the vertex is going to be down here at the bottom. So coming to question two, is the vertex a minimum, lowest, or maximum point? Lowest is minimum, and the vertex is your minimum point. So I'm going to circle that. That means later when you're asked about uh, what is the minimum or the maximum value, you know you're going to have a minimum value. The y-intercept is 23, or more specifically, parentheses 0, comma, 23. 
and now we're going to find the vertex. B is 14, and A is 2. So, H equals negative B over 2A, which will be negative 14 over 2 times 2. All right, negative 14 over 4. That will be negative 7 over 2. Now the way we find K is we set all of our X values equal to negative 7 over 2. So, our function will be 2 times negative 7 over 2 squared plus 14 times negative 7 over 2 plus 23. Now let's see. Negative seven over two. We have to square that before we multiply by two. Negative times negative is positive. Seven times seven is 49. Two times two is four. So that will be 49 over 4. Now, plus times minus is minus. That's 14 times negative 7 over 2. Uh, that's going to be, see how 2 goes into 2 one time, and then it goes into 14 seven times. So we have seven times negative seven, which is negative or minus 49. Plus 23. And we always add and subtract left to right, so don't start jumping ahead. Now look at this. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into four two times. So what we're going to have is 49 over 2 minus 49 plus 23. Now I'll show you a trick. 49 over 2 is just one half of 49. So if I have half of 49 and I take away 49, I have the other half of 49 there. But it's negative, of course, because I'm subtracting 49. I've got half of 49, and I subtract all of 49. That's going to give me negative 49 over 2 plus 23. Now, since my calculator isn't here, I don't think. Nope. Evidently, it's disappeared. I hate it when that happens. Well, I wish this would go away now. There. Okay. Oh, Wabadimu, how could you leave me? Well, whatever. We're going to have to actually pretend this is the old days and do this by hand. So I'll multiply by I'll, I'll multiply 23 by 1 in the form of 2 over 2 
and that will give me negative 49 over 2 plus 46 over 2. That will give me negative 3 over 2. Negative 49 plus 46 is negative 3, but it's over 2. So negative 3 over 2. That's what our, let me write it out here, that's what our k is. So our vertex is going to be negative 7 over 2, comma, negative 3 over 2. Now that I've got my vertex, I can get all of the other information I need. Life is easy now. The equation of the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals the h number. What is our h number? Negative 7 over 2. What is the minimum or the maximum value? It's going to be k, either way you look at it. And so k is negative 3 over 2. Notice I don't say k equals. I don't say y equals. I just give the number negative 3 over 2. Now state the domain of the quadratic function. You can just memorize this. As long as it's a function, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And now the range of the function. Well, let's see. This is a cupped up parabola. So our range for a cupped up parabola is bracket k, which is negative 3 over 2, to infinity, positive infinity. The hardest thing is finding the vertex. Hopefully we won't have a lot of other fractions, but if we do, we can live with it. All right, here we have a quadratic trinomial and the number A is negative. That means we're going to have a cupped down parabola. Cupped down. The turnaround point is the vertex, which is here. We call the vertex HK. This is the highest point, so it's a maximum point. Let me circle maximum point, maximum highest point. Now, the y-intercept is negative 16, but I have to write it as an ordered pair. 0, negative 16. That's because negative 16 is the number you get when all your x's are 0. So here x is 0, y is negative 16. Now, the vertex, I'm going to find H. Now, let's check this out. B is negative 6. A is negative 1. So, we're going to have negative B 
over 2a, and that will give us negative, negative 6 over 2 times negative 1, which will be positive 6 over negative 2, and we'll have negative 3. So negative 3 is our H number. Now we'll find K. Oops. No, it's not going to work. K equals negative 1 times negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 16. Okay. Negative 1 times positive 9 minus 6 times negative 3 will be plus 18 minus 16. So that will be negative 9 plus 18 is positive 9 minus 16 is negative 7. So negative 7 is our K. And we have H and K. Now the axis of symmetry is H. X equals H. You have to have the X there. X equals H. That's the equation of a vertical line. Let me erase the H. And our H is negative 3. So X equals negative 3 is the equation of the axis of symmetry. And our minimum or maximum value is always the K number, so whatever K is, negative 7. But I should have specified circle which one. We have a maximum, a maximum value. The highest value is negative 7. Now state the domain of the quadratic function. Negative infinity to positive infinity. That's the entire x axis. No problems with quadratic functions. I love them. State the range of the quadratic function. Well, what have we got again? We've got a maximum point. We've got a cup down parabola, though. That's the important point. We've got a cup down parabola. Cup down, right here. Let's circle it. So negative infinity to our k number and then a bracket. Well, our k number is negative 7. So there you go. Remember that's the y's. Here's negative 7. And it goes down from there all the way to negative infinity. But we always write range from lowest to highest. So the range is the y-coordinates that make up all the points on the graph. 